So Aethersong posted a great video going over a closer look at the crafting system. And this video is going to be based off the information shared in that specific video. I'll include a link in the description for you guys. So if you haven't seen it, you can go check it out. You should always just go check them out, subscribe to them as well. I think that's going to be a great way of saying thanks for the work that they've already uh, put into covering this game. But I'm doing that as a way of also answering uh, this question that was left for me by Mr. Liquid Chef saying, what are your thoughts on monetized crafting items giving a better chance for great success? as well as the extra rewards monetized tickets they have me worried. And so we're going to be talking about this all in context together today. Uh, there's also another comment that I'd like to bring up here real quick, but we'll jump into this later from L3X saying the devs did not say that you'd be able to do everything by just playing the game for free. They want people to be able to pro uh, progress faster and just be able to do the same things faster as people who play a lot because not everyone has all the time in the world. And they go on uh, to, to describe some more information. We're gonna bring them back here uh, later in this video to give uh, them more time to speak to what we're talking about here as well. Because again, my whole view of content creation is that it shouldn't just be my voice. I love to highlight the voice of others. And if you are out there making content and no one's discovered it yet, you can always let me know what you're doing. I'd love to check out your content as well. But with that being said, with that intro under the belt, uh, hello everyone and welcome uh, to my channel. My name is Brian if you're new around here. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, you sexy beast. That's what you get for subscribing, by the way. Free compliments, usually around the start of these videos. But we've got a lot to talk about because no matter what, however this game ends up being monetized as a part of the global version, as a part of the, uh, the JP version, I have seen this story play out and I'm not trying to be a cynic here. I'm just trying to be a realist to how gamers tend to process information. I talk about the acceptability curve has information is, is processed and people kind of uh, compare it. And what I mean to say is that there is no world in which that somebody out there on the internet, big or small, labels this game pay to win. There's no world that we're going to all exist in where somebody doesn't go from hardcore defending the game to hardcore attacking the game and vice versa. Everybody's working off of translated information, limited information, and that ends up being kind of a bad thing in reality. Like to throw myself under the bus, the content creation aspect that we all crave, uh, both in the consumption of the content, it can come with its downsides. And one of those downsides is when you're not working with a full picture. We don't have hands-on information. We don't know how it's going to feel in our hands. And the feeling is actually what's more important here. Um, while in the real world, I'll defend facts over feelings hands down, but feeling ends up becoming the narrative. It can become the source of truth. It can become the zeitgeist in which that games will have to overcome. So how do I feel about them monetized crafting items giving a chance for better success or great success? Well, honestly, I don't care. <laughs> like it's, it's not to be sent as callous. It's not to be sent uh, or understood as like your view of that is less than because being worried is perfectly fine, but this is the season of worry before we get into the season of hype. As soon as the hype kicks in, worry will get suppressed. Worry will come back and start peeking its head out as soon as the grind in the game becomes real, because let's actually talk about progression because that's really what is at stake here. If you don't spend money, will you be able to get progression? And the answer is yes. You will be able to get these items. You will be able to progress. You will probably just have less opportunity or less velocity, I guess is the right word that I want to use here, in terms of other players who are willing to spend money. The question is, is does that then keep you out of content, keep you out of any race? And if so, and if the answer becomes yes, for those people, the game will be pay to win. Doesn't mean it will be overall pay to win. It doesn't mean you will have to agree with them. But just note that if somebody feels the pressure and it, the, the intensity of the pressure is fine, you know, that, like, that, like any level of that will have that, people will still label that as such. Does that prevent people from playing the game? Hell no. Like the numbers themselves prove itself out. People might use that label as a way of talking themselves out or trying to convince other people not to play. But if the game is fun to play, people will throw money at the screen. And that's not me being a cynic. That's just how it works. Uh, you know, beyond all the clickable headlines and, 
and the whole content cycle. That's just how it works. Anyway, now, am I worried? What are my thoughts about monetization? I really hope that they play it smart because even a good game can burn people out and have them frustrated based off of their level of investment. Upgrading my progression should not feel like a casino. And this is where RNG progression and static progression really need to go somewhat hand in hand. And what I mean by that, if you've never heard me talk about this subject across MMORPGs that I like to cover, static progression is you go to your work and you get paid. RNG progression is, hey, company did well this year. Here's a bonus. And what you see with games that really struggle, Anthem is a really good option to bring in as a discussion, especially because they had like pure RNG progression. So imagine us all going to work and then at the end of the day, we roll the dice and Bob gets paid, but nobody else gets paid today. You know, it never feels good. And Bob feels good. And he might feel a little bit bad that not everybody else got what they needed. And he might feel a little bit bad that y'all might not get to move into the next challenge because only he got the item. And then, oh, it, it, you did it again. And oh, guess what? It went to Bob again. Why did it go to Bob? Because that's random. That's the nature of it. The system is not necessarily trying to be balanced it's just trying to be surprising and you want to marry the system with the static going to work chipping away doesn't mean you're going to get that upgrade each and every time but you as a player know that as you spend enough time you will get to your goal and even if that goal is a month away two months away a year away it doesn't matter as long as it's understood so that the player knows what they can detail. Now, here's where it gets complex. Here's where the complication comes in when it comes down to any kind of monetized level of incentive and progression. The game will offer you the ways of playing without having to spend money. And I think that's a really good thing. I would prefer if it had a buy to play model. I'm going to always say that, I always advocate for buy to play, namely because it at least has a gatekeeper. Because even with RNG progression, if you could buy these weapons with in-game currency and you had a player trading aspect of it, well, then the option is like, yeah, go grind it out and you can build out wealth within the game's currency. And then if a player gets an item that they don't want, they can they can make that trade, right? But I do believe that the game does not have trading. And I think that's usually in part because also the free-to-play nature of it. Now, we do see free-to-play games with trading. So don't quote me on that. The game is not out yet. That's one of those mystery items for the back of my head to kind of you know mull over from time to time but let's focus it up here on the l3x's comment because i think it's really important to kind of highlight again this voice as well l3x says and i kind of quoted a little bit of this but we'll start it over from the start the devs did say that you'll be able to do everything by just playing the game for free uh, or did not say <laughs> one of the, I'm, I'm dyslexic guys, forgive me. Um, the devs did say people will be able to do everything by just playing the game for free. They just want to make people to be able to progress faster, just to be able to do the same thing faster as people who play a lot, because not everybody has all the time in the world to play a freaking game the whole day. Some have to work a lot, imagine. So yeah, that sounds pretty reasonable to me. If you want to work at a faster progression, get it. If you can wait, play the game. But faster definitely doesn't mean more or extra. Why do people still misinterpret what the devs have said on the live stream? And the really the answer to that is it comes down to translations. It comes down to players' expectation and understanding. And so them asking this question, like I, the, the answer is just human nature and gamer nature and fear of processing it. So it sounds like they understood what they were saying a little bit sooner than other people will. And the only way to really have them help that answer that is really to, for people to go hands on. But the other aspect to this original part of their, their comment here literally is about the idea that as people will play the game and will feel like, you know, I could spend 30 hours grinding out that item or I could just spend five dollars. They'll quantify their hourly rate against that 30 hours and they'll associate the item cost to saying like you really want me to put in $300 or just $5 like they'll start putting number a dollar amount on any grind and then they might feel that pressure and thus they'll label the game in a way that either keeps them from playing it or you know it is a, a something you don't like to hear now 
Uh, you get more chances when you buy tickets, but not better. And however, do they've said they've uh, strongly against pay to win and everyone will be able to do the same things except for cosmetics, which is fine. Cosmetics behind paywall, perfectly fine. Uh, by playing for free. So don't just worry about much about that. Come and check out the game and decide after. That's the rest of that advice right there. It's literally free. So why not wait until it's playable to bash on it? Don't, and I don't think he's bashing on it. He's just saying he's concerned. I don't believe every BS people say about the game to get some attention. The dev streams are even out there translated in English and everyone can watch them. I, uh, I watch them live. Don't understand me wrong. I'm not mad at you. I do understand you did hear that some of the, from some attention seeking content creator, but they were talking BS. That's what is starting to piss me off because there are so many reasons they didn't watch the live stream, didn't make the, any content about the game before, and I'm waiting three years for the game, and they now talk BS just to get some attention because they notice people want to play that game. You, you. Sadly, many people uh, that don't uh, that D, that D hole DK holes uh, and hopefully people with some brains come to check it out uh, by themselves before they jump in the BS wagon bashing on the game before it's even playable Amazon concerns me more than Bandai at the moment uh, they did say they will censor the game and I think that they might even bring some pay to win in the game I think it would be the opposite actually in the case of Amazon uh, with how it ends up being structured more for Western kind of mindsets because like in the East you can like buying a weapon for money uh, it isn't frowned on like, uh, you know, there might be certain areas, but from everything I hear from everybody that's over there, that's kind of what people say. Like, that's just, people are fine with that. Um, they could definitely uh, do that. They have uh, said that about the game on the Western side, while the devs and Bandai did clearly promise that they won't uh, be any pay to win. Amazon didn't promise anything. Uh, the only thing I would say that L3X really absolutely misses the ball on is in that they too could also become the biggest anti blue protocol person out there. Uh, in the world like they've been following the game they're passionate about it and they don't understand gaming nature they don't understand uh like this they think it's essentially all about like attention seeking and some content creators are absolutely out there for attention seeking but the reality and i've talked about this numerous times all content creation all comments is attention seeking that is the currency of social media that's the currency of the comment session a tweet and more you might not agree with me or not but i like as soon as you start to think about that as, as well like the product that is twitter is attention both giving and getting uh and that's the same thing and essentially with all content creation even this video gives me attention and that's awesome because i like attention but when you talk about doing it in a deceptive way honestly i it's it's so predictable uh from my perspective like when it comes down to it i see people get upset about it there's the anti-content creator gamer out there and they, they those exist in terms of like the information and everything that's uh being presented i don't think l3x is in that camp but um that's this there it's they're the opposite side of the coin that's all kind of growing like they would argue that reddit or written content is is better because it's not truly monetized even though it actually uh, is monetized in that degree and monetization is is the whole point of this video the whole point in this conversation why i really want to bring up l3x's comment here as well is that monetization makes it all questionable it makes my intentions questionable it makes the devs intentions questionable and it all comes down to your personal relationship with the game and how you feel pressured or otherwise to spend money that's why i would say the best advice from adults to adults is Free games aren't free. If you like the game, be prepared to spend some money on it. And what you can do, the best and healthiest way to do it is set a budget for supporting the game. Whether that's $15 a month, think about it in terms of like an optional subscription, right? We're not really seeing subscriptions come back. Maybe I'm wrong there. We'll have to wait and see how time plays out. Um, but when it comes down to the subscription model, well, the game's free, it's gonna cost you nothing. If you're having fun with the game, set aside a little bit of money every month to support it, whether it's through a cosmetic or what have you. And I think you're going to have a really good time and the game will continue to go on. And that's a win for everybody. If you have a, a gambling addiction, avoid those kind of mechanics and those kind of games. One of the things I will do for you guys is sit down and kind of talk through the monetization in more detail, especially when Amazon has published it out and we can go hands-on with all of it in real, in the real side of it. But even in the real side of it, anything and everything can change. Intention can change. Leadership can change. So I don't necessarily worry about, I don't worry about it. 
because there's no point in worrying about it. I mean, and I guess that's kind of the real point that I usually come at it. Back to uh, Mr. Liquid Chef. What are your thoughts on monetization crafting items? I think as long as the game is fun to play and that there's a, a reasonable way of earning those items, cool. I'm probably going to spend money on it, you know, because I want to support the game and that's perfectly fine. I'm well within my rights to do so, but I will set a budget for that. And this extra reward monetization tickets, I, I think we're looking at translation issues. I think we're looking at how it all shakes out. No matter what, there's going to be people who mark this game as a pay to win game. Everybody's going to have their personal definition. And because the term pay to win has been so watered down, so hyper used for the clickbait mindset, even this video's title will have pay to win on it because it is a eye grabbing term. And because of it, that nature, that's just going to be the process that the game travels down. And the thing is, does this doom the game at all? Clearly no. A fun game, it does not matter what any content creator says about it, what any title, thumbnail, uh, reaction, uh, whatever big streamer, whether Asmongold says, gives a thumbs up or a thumbs down, it doesn't matter. If you're having fun, keep having fun. If you're not having fun, there's probably a hundred other games you can go play. Lots of really cool stuff to do and talk about. But those are my thoughts. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you, Mr. Liquid Chef, for the video. Thank you, Aether Song, for posting a uh, detailed video over the clo closer look at the crafting system itself. And uh, thank you, L3X, for your comment as well with the detail and especially your passion for following this game. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks so much again. Hopefully I'll see you in my next video. But until then, take care.